I'm married. But it was quite a road to get here. And I'm not talking about the last year, you know, having to come back to Canada, thinking I might have cancer, and then turns out I don't have cancer, and then turns out I do have cancer, and I stuck there, and I can't leave, and then, you know, not being able to travel, and all that crap, and then finally being able to come here, and rush the last few days to organize everything. Both planes that I took to get here were delayed, so, you know, very complicated road. But I'm not talking about, like, all that, I'm just talking about, like, the last couple of days. So, I believe last video I recorded was in the airport. So let me just kind of summarize everything. So, at, I had the treatment, well, I, I need to think back because it feels like so long ago, even though it was like three, four days ago. <laughs> so, on Monday was my last treatment. Well, my last treatment. The last one, not the final one. <clears throat> so, I had to wake up super early for that, like 5.30, 5.45, I think. Uh, went at the hospital, did the normal, you know, blood test, talked to the doctor, um, and uh, then do the treatment. Then after that, straight to the airport. Then the whole check-in at the airport, wait at the gate. They change the gate, so go to a different gate, check to make sure it's the right gate. And then there's like, you know, back and forth where you're not quite sure and you're waiting. You're like, well, at some point, I'm assuming they'll tell us where to go. So eventually we got on the plane, but it was half hour late if not an hour by no by the time we left we were an hour behind schedule and then which was fine because there was a four and a half hour layover at the next airport so i'm like all right not the end of the world all good i get there you know i look on the screen it says you know gate whatever i go there and i'm like okay it's not on the screen so i asked the guy and he's like oh no it's that gate over there so i go to the gate over there but it's also not indicated and there's a plane boarding so i can't go and ask so I wait and, um, you know, eventually it shows up and then they call my name and they're like, oh yeah, we need to see a return flight. And I'm like, I don't have one. So I had to buy one. And, you know, there's a whole story that goes along with that because apparently that website gives you an 80% refund when you cancel your ticket, if you get the right time of ticket. And I did that in the past. Everything went fine. This time it seems to not be working properly for some reason. I'm just getting impartial refunds. So I have to deal with all that bullshit. But anyway, that's fine. So eventually, you know, I get here, but the second plane was delayed by over an hour. So by the time I got here, got through customs, took forever. It was almost four o'clock by the time I finally got out. And the thing is, I felt bad because my girlfriend and, well, girlfriend at the time, now wife, but anyway, and her family was waiting there. So her mother, her sister, and her brother, as well as her uncle, who was a taxi driver, who kind of agreed to go there and pretty much drive us around while we're here for some of the things. <clears throat> so it was almost four o'clock by the time I finally got out. And, you know, they were waiting there. My brother-in-law now has had a sign in English, which was really cool. <laughs> and, you know, the her mother was filming, her sister was filming, and, you know, reunited, took a bunch of pictures, it was really nice. And of course, my plan initially, before I found out that her family would be there too, was I'm gonna propose as soon as I hear, see her, just because it's like I can't, like this has been such a long time coming. We've been talking about this for so long, waiting for so long, that I'm like, I, I don't wanna wait another second. So my plan was to propose, and I'm like, I'm still gonna do that even though the family's there. I check with them, kind of arrange things, and that's why they were filming partially. <laughs> And anyway, so we hug, you know, give a hug to everyone. And then at the end, you know, take her hands, you know, say the whole, I can't imagine my life without you, uh, you know, and then get down on one knee, will you marry me? Obviously it was more elaborate, more romantic than that. I'm just summarizing because I have a limited amount of time. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it was really cool. Obviously she said yes, because now I'm married. And, <laughs> I mean, also, we'd been planning the wedding. That was, like, one of the big reasons why I was coming here. But, you know, still. Now, it, then it was official. And at the end, it was cool because there was a bunch of other people. So, everyone started applauding. I'm like, oh, that's nice. It's like in a movie. <laughs> so, anyway, after that, we go to the the taxi, you know, drop off the, her family, then come back here. And by then, it's like, I don't know, 5.30, something like that. I'm completely exhausted from not having slept for, like, a day. Sorry, day and a half. So the next day we pretty much slept all day, just recovering, sorry, recovering from that. <clears throat> and then the day after that, we're like, okay, we need to go out. We need to get all the things because I needed a suit. I needed, you know, shoes. I needed, um, <clears throat> a 
let's see what else I need. Anyway, she needed some things, I needed some things. Uh, we also needed stuff to buy for her family, like presents for Christmas, because Christmas is in two days. And uh, so we did all that. The last two days, that's what we did. <clears throat> and it was exhausting. I realized that the, you know, the heat and the fact that I'm just, I have less muscle, less endurance and everything, I tire much faster. And I got dizzy a couple of times. Um, I threw up with that, that, that'll come later. <laughs> And yeah, it's just much more difficult. And as it goes along and I get more tired, I just cough more and it's more intense for me. And then I get home and it's like I'm exhausted and I'm just like, okay, this this is not going to, I can't push myself this much. But anyway, we did all that. We got everything ready. Yesterday was the wedding. Uh, you know, her family came here early. We got all ready and everything. That's, as you can tell, I got a haircut. So <clears throat> just quick aside for that reason, as you know, why I cut my hair initially and then let it grow was so I could be able to track my progress and as my hair grows longer it's a visual representation of I'm still alive I'm struggling I'm not I'm struggling but I'm, I'm fighting this like it's a good sign so I'm like I don't want to cut my hair but it, it'll look horrible before so I'm like I kind of need to do something for the wedding so I'm like, all right let's cut it on the sides and let's keep it the normal length on the top so this is the normal like six month length that way I can still track it but I don't look horrible for the wedding pictures <clears throat> so anyway back to the wedding so wedding day, they show up there. My girlfriend goes for a couple hours to get her hair done. Everything, she looks amazing. I mean, she always looks amazing, but you know, the next level of amazing. <laughs> and I got a haircut, so I'm like, oh, cool, I look decent. Uh, the suit fit well, everything was good. So we go to, we're waiting actually, her uncle, the, the guy who's driving the taxi was supposed to pick us up, but he doesn't show up and we're waiting. We try to contact him, he's not answering. We're trying to reach his wife and she's like, I don't know, he left this morning. I, I don't know where he is. I don't know what he's doing. So eventually we're like, all right, we can't wait anymore. We're going to be late for the wedding. So <clears throat> let's just use like the equivalent of Uber down here. So we order like an Uber a guy shows up and as we're driving, we kind of explain the situation. We're like, Hey, by the way, would you like to be a witness? Because the other guy who didn't show up was supposed to be our witness. So now we need a witness because otherwise we're screwed. Would you mind doing that? So, you know, he was really nice, so he did that. And then after the ceremony, we also went to a restaurant. So he came with us, drove us there. We invited him, he ate with us. Then he drove us to the photo session after that and then drove her family home and then drove us home. So from like 2.30 to like 8, he was with us the whole time. So we got really, really lucky that we fell, like we found this really cool guy. <clears throat> and he might be able to drive us other places in the future while I'm here. So very, very lucky on that front. The kind of bad news, or the less fun news, <laughs> was during the ceremony. So the ceremony is a, you know, civil ceremony. So we go to a lawyer's office and, you know, adjust to the piece and they read everything and we do the ceremony there. And we have a bunch of pictures. I'm going to post them on social media later. <clears throat> but it was a very small office, really hot with just a fan and a bunch of people. And it's just, I, because I have less energy, and it's hard for me to handle the heat. I was wearing a suit and everything. Like near the end of the ceremony, I just started getting lightheaded. And it's like the point where it's like starting to go black. And I'm like, I need to sit down because otherwise I'm going to pass out. So like I sat down for 30 seconds. And I'm like feeling a little better. So I stood up again just so they could finish everything. Then they finished. I sat back down. But I'm like, yeah, I'm not feeling good. They're like, oh, you know, here's like a candy. Like maybe you need sugar or something like that. I start sucking, I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to throw up. So I go to the bathroom, throw my, like, throw up. And it's just like, well, at least I didn't throw up during the ceremony and I didn't faint. So could have been worse. <laughs> so, yeah, it definitely wasn't the best. But, you know, we have a cool, couple cool stories out of it. I can say that, you know, I almost fainted during the wedding. Uh, I can say that I almost threw up during the wedding. And we can, you know, have that cool story about some random uh, in-driver taxi guy who just, you know, ended up being our witness. He's in a bunch of pictures and everything. And it's just, it's a really cool story. Plus, now I'm married, which sounds really weird in the best way possible, simply because I never imagined myself getting married. But once I met her and everything, I'm just like, yeah, I, I think I do now. <clears throat> and that went from I think I do to of course I do to I can't imagine my life without her. And here we are. I'm officially married. <laughs> ah, all right, we still have a bunch of stuff to do, so I should probably go. I'll check back in at some point in the future. <laughs>